Welcome to Circle the City, one of the most dynamic and innovative models in the country for meeting the healthcare needs of people experiencing homelessness. Oh, <laughs> Circle the City is a 501c3 organization and a federally qualified health center. We are also a Health Resources and Services Administration, or HRSA, grantee. Since 2012, we have been serving men, women, and children experiencing homelessness in Maricopa County. Because being on the street, you're hungry, you're dirty, you're tired, and you can't take care of your wounds properly. So this place provides a safe place for us to eat and have our wounds taken care of by, you know, professional people. How has it been for you? It's been great. It's been uplifting and it's been a place where I can feel safe and uh, eat <laughs> and not be dirty and get cleaned up and the staff is great. Our mission is to create and deliver innovative healthcare solutions that compassionately address the needs of our patients. Our vision is a healthy community without homelessness. And our values include meeting people where they are, treating all with dignity and respect, <laughs> acting with the highest integrity, and serving the needs of the whole person, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. And your health has greatly improved since you've been here. Yeah. I have to say that. Yes, you do. <laughs> we offer integrated health care, which includes primary and behavioral care through three distinct service lines. Let's begin with our first service line, which is our outpatient care. We have two outpatient care clinics. And when you walk in, it probably looks a lot like your own doctor's office. Here we provide a comprehensive array of primary and preventative health care services. Both pre-scheduled and walk-up appointments are available. And once established with our health clinic, patients can get access to a number of services, including medical evaluation of an illness and injury, prenatal and pediatric care, including well-child visits, evaluation and management of chronic diseases, immunizations, including a COVID-19 or flu shot, behavioral health and substance abuse consultation, case management and care coordination, social services, including assistance with identification, social supports and housing, and finally, transportation assistance to different medical appointments. Our outpatient clinics are staffed by supportive, caring, and compassionate people who are committed to helping people achieve their best health and their best life. Speaking to people. That sounds fantastic. All right, well, let me take a listen. Okay. It's, it's just like um, you walking into your family medicine uh, provider. Uh, you know, we definitely have the patients that we see through the continuum, um, which is great. That's why I went into family medicine. Uh, I used to work in private practice and, and you get to connect with people and, and watch people evolve and, and just be a part of their lives. So it's the same here. Um, I'm connecting with you. I'm, I'm helping your diabetes uh, in terms of gaining better control. I'm counseling you um, on diet and nutrition. Um, you know, I'm telling you why you need to take your meds <laughs> for the non-compliant. Um, and then we're seeing you a follow-up we're getting your labs where you come in with an acute uh, issue um, aches and pains and injury a hospital follow-up I mean we're, we're seeing them uh, for all of that our second line of service is our medical respite care we have two medical respite care centers each has 50 beds for adult men and women recovering from acute illness or injury we offer full room and board 24-7 nursing support, and daily health care. Respite is ideal for patients who are no longer sick enough to remain in the hospital, but still too sick to be on the street. They need a safe temporary place to heal, rest, and recover. And our chefs prepare delicious meals for patients to enjoy three times a day. 
And so we're collectively looking at, is there an acute need um, that is really quite great, that someone needs that safe um, landing place, if you will, to be cared for daily, um, to have those healthcare needs met, to connect with specialists, to recover from a surgery. Um, there's multiple different reasons why someone might qualify um, for it, but usually it, Again, it's something that they just can't manage in their current environment or even with seeing us you know, daily. It's just they're so vulnerable um, that they need uh, a safe spot to, to convalesce. Dang, that's good. Okay. I feel good. You feel good? Yeah. Patients in respite can also get integrative behavioral health services, referrals to dental and other specialty providers, transportation to their medical appointments, substance abuse intervention, physical and occupational therapy, care coordination, and case management. We try to connect each patient who comes to respite with stable long-term housing so when they get ready to discharge they can go to their own home instead of back to the street. Healthy and housed is a dream come true for hundreds of our patients. All right, on. Thank you, Marla. Well, we worked as a team, and this is the result. And it makes me so happy that you're in your own place. Uh -huh. um, this is just the beginning for you. It is just yeah. stepping stone. Just yeah. stepping stone for what's next. <laughs> what's next? <Yeah. laughs> our third service line is our community outreach. We have four mobile medical units that provide health care to homeless individuals who are not able to get to traditional fixed site care. Each mobile medical unit is equipped with two exam rooms, a restroom, workstations, and a team of three to four providers to establish trust and deliver quality care. And the best part? We provide service to all parts of Maricopa County, including Mesa, five days a week. Our outreach teams also provide care in congregate community settings, like Mesa's East Valley Men's Shelter. As an organization, you know, we're really trying to connect um, with those experiencing homelessness where they're at. Um, and sometimes where that is at is a little further away than, than where our clinics stand. Uh, so to have those units, to be able to go out into the encampments, to the other areas where we know there's a larger population of those experiencing homelessness, it's typically they're on the streets. Um, we can be there to connect with them, uh, provide any acute needs, um, encourage them, you know, again, to get to Parsons, to have that healthcare home, that family-centered home, if you will, like your PCP office. Mm -hmm. um, and it helps spread the word and so that people do know that we're here and we do want to help them and that we are a resource for them. Yeah. Most people have no idea what that's like. What's that feeling like? It's uh, scary. It's scary. Uh, but thanks to uh, people that were on the street that we met at the, at the park, including the Mesa Police Department, they're in Little Angels. We're sitting in the car. Are you emotional about it? Oh, yeah. How, tell me, why? Well, we had to surrender everything we had in storage here. Our daughter came, came to Arizona to go to college. Came to, she got everything done. She's ready to go into college. And this happens. Last year, Circle the City assisted over 7,500 patients. And that number is expected to grow this year. To provide our services, we rely upon our federal HRSA base grant and private philanthropy grants from foundations, corporations, and tribal entities, and the Arizona Community Foundation. Also, individual donors and the Arizona Charitable Tax Credit. We are so grateful for the generous support of all of our supporters and donors. We work hard every day with the vision of a healthy community without homelessness. I will not be alive now if I did not receive proper medical care. So just having now a purpose of something I can do with my life, that is something you gave me. And I want to say thank you. I saw you walking the light and the 